Hello guys, nice to see you. Welcome to a new video and today I thought I would talk about confidence since it's a subject I think that I've been asked a lot of advice on in my life for some reason and I really love the subject of confidence. I think in any day and age confidence is an attribute worth having and worth investing in and uh, especially now in 2021 when it seems like everyone has been given a voice, a platform to speak on their truth, which is amazing. It's amazing that we have gotten to this point as a society. However, sometimes confidence, uh, even in this day and age, can be misconstrued as being arrogant or not being humble enough to see um, the good in others. And I just want to... Uh, one. I just want to make it clear that I do think that confidence and being humble go together hand in hand. They don't need to contradict each other. Uh, there are two things that really, if they are implemented together, can make a person seem even more confident from within. And I just want to say that the true confidence um, and achieving true confidence can be done only from within. A it might seem like a cliche, but truly, if you are confident from within, if you've managed to achieve that state uh, within yourself, then you can show it to the world and you never need to think about putting on a mask when, when you're out in the world. You just naturally have that amazing energy about you and once it's developed within you, I don't think it ever really goes away. Of course, everyone can have some bad days when they're not feeling confident but as a whole it's a great thing to invest in and I think anyone can do it if, if you give yourself the time to invest in yourself in that way. I, I truly truly believe that confidence is necessary for a truly fulfilled life to be able to really know ourselves fully and to allow ourselves to experience new things that maybe we were scared to experience before to not feel Ill, uh, to actually to not feel guilty for being confident to actually embrace the confidence that we have it's not a bad thing as we have been told for so many years i think especially in childhood it's a really amazing thing to have uh, and i just want to share today five things that i really truly believe if implemented it's a guaranteed result that you can be more confident. So let's just see what the five things are. Now these, um, now I've selected these um, things from personal experiences or from experiences that I've witnessed in the people around me, um, my friends and people that I know. And I just want to say there's so many things that I can sit here and share with you about being confident that might work for some and might not work for others or vice versa but i think that these things um i've selected them because they're really not shallow they're really not you know looks and appearance based uh, they're really you really need to dig deep uh, within yourself and be vulnerable enough to try um and increase your confidence by implementing these things so some believe that being confident is all about looks um, if you look good if you take care of yourself physically of course mentally then you'll become confident and um, you really need to focus on that I, I'm not against this idea uh, of course to look good and to take care of yourself is really important if you want to be confident but I just want to go one step further and for the first point I want to say um, take care of yourself and instead of just working on looking good focus on other aspects such as standing tall um, wherever you go make sure you're not hunched back you have a nice posture um, even on the worst days I think that posture when when you focus on your posture and you look at yourself and you want to make sure you are straight and you are your back is straight and you are walking uh, really 
in a nice way, looking forward, not looking down, uh, your neck is straight, of course, then this really, really helps maybe even more than let's say makeup or any other things that you can use to feel confident if, because of course if your back is straight then that has a direct influence on every other part of your body you you will breathe better you will you would also be encouraged to you know walk straight and sit down and have a nice tall posture um, I think every time I walk straight and I'm focusing on my posture, I'm more calm and um, I feel so free, like nothing can really bother me. Like I'm really in touch with, with my physicality, with my physical being and that's really important. And then the other thing I would say is focus on grooming and on looking clean. Um, I'm not advocating for going to the hairdressers every week or getting someone professional to do your makeup or etc i mean this these are nice things if, if you can have them of course but it's it's not necessary what i'm talking about is something more simple you know looking clean always having a shower uh, i think you know it's it might seem like oh it's a small thing and it's so you know it's so mundane like to say this but really if you have a shower before you leave your house before getting ready it's just like a whole different feeling you know first of all the pores open up in the shower and all the toxic energy that you had can actually be um, released with a good shower and the other thing is if you come out of the shower energized, you will get ready with all that positive energy. You will focus more on getting ready um, and you will just have all in all a more positive attitude when you go outside. So um, having, and also, you know, of course, washing your hair when necessary um, and brushing your hair if you have long hair like me is so important. I, I know on the days that maybe i went out without brushing my hair properly i kind of regret those days <laughs> because i always seem to have a picture of to remind me of those days or or maybe i met someone i on the street or wherever i went and didn't feel like i looked good and especially if you have long hair make sure you always brush it and take care of it it just looks really clean and looks like you're really taking care of yourself and taking care of yourself is really possibly the most important thing uh, for confidence just knowing that you take care of yourself in any way that's beneficial to you personally and this is going to be personal this is going to be different for each and every person another thing that I find quite useful when trying to achieve confidence is do what you say you're going to do so let me just explain this one um, when you share something with the world especially on social media and on platforms where a lot of people might see what you're posting or saying uh, but even in real life of course um, make sure you share those big moments or small moments it doesn't really matter that you know that you've invested your time in your energy in and basically you know that it's something important that first of all needs to be shared uh, and something that maybe you've worked on for a while and it's time to share it with the world but make sure it's not something that you are promising um, that might not come true or something that you keep repeatedly saying and there's no real results to show that you're ever going to do it. So just to make it more clear, I'm going to give an example. Um, I spend a lot of time on Instagram. I, For me, uh, 45 minutes a day is a lot of time to spend on something. And sometimes I'm there for a long time. And especially around the new year or around... Um, the times of the year when people focus more on their business, uh, on their goals, such as January, 
I've seen so many posts, like so, so, so many, I can't even count on saying the exact same words. Um, big things are coming. I've been working on this project for a long time. I can't wait to sh I can't wait to share it with you and everyone else. And sometimes if you go back, if you look at someone's post after that, there's nothing really there's nothing else on their profile that redirects people to that post. There's nothing really on their profile that links to the initial post. And okay, this is fine if it's one or two examples, but honestly, I can guarantee I've seen at least 50 of these and there's no need really to announce to the world that you're working on something big or something big is coming or really there's no need to share so many things when they're not ready to be shared and that's all good you know there's so many projects that have been started I'm sure in everyone's life and I'm sure that there are so many talented people out there but I don't think it's necessary to share everything, especially on social media, and I, I'm i pretty sure that can ruin your confidence if you announce amazing things uh, and then maybe they don't happen or they're delayed and people start asking you on the status of things and honestly it can really ruin your confidence because if you first of all you're not sure about something then you share it with others all the questions um, that people will ask you will soon be internalized and become your own questions and 90 percent of the time probably you're going to end up saying is it even worth it to try is it even worth it to do this if people already have such high hopes and expectations about something that I announced and I'm not even sure how to start the whole thing. Um, so yes, I think it's really important to maintain your privacy no matter what you do in life. It doesn't matter if it's a professional goal you're setting for yourself um, or in your personal life. The best thing is to be really, really, I would say, creative with how and what you share with others whether it's on social media or real life, there needs to be a certain type of mystery surrounding you if you really want to be confident. And a lot of people have talked about this, but I have to mention, I think the greatest example of confidence is Rihanna. I um, really, really love her. I admire her. But apart from that, what I admire is how and what she decides to share um, she always has this witty, funny way of sharing her projects, but when she's asked about certain things that she wanna, doesn't want to talk about necessarily, she has a great way of diverting the interviewer's attention into something else, and um, she has that famous quote uh, that's been going around a lot lately saying, you know, what do you do when you're not confident? And she just says, well, I fake it. I go out, I fake it, I pretend I am confident and that helps me, you know, and she stands straight, she walks in a room knowing that her presence there is is valued, you know, she doesn't do anything that might show that she doesn't value herself, you know, if she walks into a room she knows, you know, I am meant to be here, I respect everyone who's here and I respect what they do, but I am you know, someone who's equally as valuable as everyone else. And that's just amazing. Another thing that people might forget um, about is doing some personal branding. Now, what I mean by personal branding is either in the workplace or just in your day-to-day -day life, know what your brand is as an individual. Uh, I know the word brand has all this stigma attached to it because people assume it's just about some big companies trying to sell you a product, um, some marketing strategies, and that's it. I don't think that's the case. Um, branding yourself, I think, is crucial nowadays. You know, there's, for example, if you go to a work interview, a job interview, and there's so many other candidates. What really makes them decide to go with you? I think there are just a few options. Either you know someone in the company and you've been recommended to work there. 
um, and that's fine maybe of course you still need to have the skills to do the job but maybe the personal branding element is not that important in that case the second thing is you work in a field where what you do is something really rare and you have a specific skill set that not many other people have and then of course everyone's just gonna focus on whether you know how to do the job and again this is different but this is quite rare in 2021 at least uh, and the third thing is you go in, you know, you manage to show everyone that you're capable to do the job, which is, of course, the most important, but you present your personal brand. What defines you, first of all? What makes you different than anyone else? And how have your past experiences shaped you and made you better? What are you going to bring to the table that is really you that's personal what can you do now that no one else can and it might seem like a crazy question since whatever field of uh, work you might be in of course there's probably a thousand other people that can do the same job as you realistically but there's only one you with regards to who you are how you present yourself and what you can bring and I'm pretty confident in when I'm saying this that all of the jobs that I had up until now have somehow incorporated this element of personal branding um, without being, without mentioning, of course, that I've been told a few times that that's what it comes down to in the company. Uh, um, certain roles really required a certain type of personality especially if you are customer facing if you work with uh, customers but putting all that aside uh, I just know that when I presented myself in a genuine way and don't get me wrong it took years and years to develop my personal brand uh, but anyway when I reached that point and I presented myself in that way the true me what I can bring to the table without necessarily, you know, fluffing it all up and making it seem more or making it seem less and just really not presenting myself in a good way. It's just a perfect balance in the middle where I knew what I'm going to say about myself. I uh, respectfully accepted all the feedback I got um, and I really knew how to communicate what my needs are. Now, this is just in the realm of a job interview. It can also be useful when you're already working. So, um, a person, uh, one of my colleagues, who was told um, she should do a personal branding training. And this was probably after two years of being in the same company, you know. Probably it does have an effect with... Um, probably it does have an effect on promotions and you know getting ahead if you want to stay in a certain company or you want to stay in a certain job it will be required of you to do more if you want to be promoted and to show to really show what your brand is i mean i think everyone I think personal branding is something that people need to see and need to know about you when making crucial de decisions. And this is true even in the personal life, you know, don't you use personal branding when you're meeting someone for the first time, whether it's a date uh, or it's just a friend or an acquaintance that you're meeting for the first time. You do use that, but then some people have developed it more than others and it's honestly a great thing for your confidence when you've gone through all those experiences you sat down with yourself to gather what was the same in all of the experiences and the answer is it was you it was the way you acted the way uh, you presented yourself and what are the maybe top five qualities that you can get from that and use it in your personal branding from now on, you know, and this is what I did and it's a great thing for confidence. It goes without saying that the third point will be do kind things for others, um, whether it's expected of you or not. 
it's really important and I promise you, I promise you, there's no way to achieve confidence without doing things for others. Um, I know many of us have been hurt and disappointed in the past from actions uh, of people that maybe we trusted and we helped and um, I know that's pretty bad and it's hard to recover from, from something like that but it's important to have confidence um, in yourself to say you know what I know who I am I am valuable I know the things that I can do and if I can help others if I can offer my help and do something kind for others why should I not do it why should others suffer by me being hurt uh, by others in the past uh, and then of course there are some of us who probably were never even considering to do something selfless and something kind um, for others and I sometimes experience this within my friend circle and I know we can't all be the same but being kind and doing a kind gesture um, I think is something is so understated it it really is like people don't even tell you what that can do for your confidence First of all, the first few times you're going to do it, you're just going to strictly focus on, you know, I want to better myself and I want to have help others more. Then you start thinking about the people you're helping. You actually start thinking about the faces, their names and start imagining how what the small gesture you might have done uh, could have changed their lives forever. And then slowly it just develops into this state of I know I'm a good person, I know I'm a kind person, I know why that's important and that does miracles for your confidence. I think it's a nice um, and unexpected uh, side benefit of being kind. So your confidence as a human being, um, as a spiritual being that we all are, uh, is really raised by this and just be kind and you can be more confident. For the last tip I have for you, I actually stayed up one night thinking about this and I wrote something down and reading it over now feels like it's something that might be even better than me just chatting and talking to you and uh, I just want to read it and this is the last point. So I wrote, say no to the things you know that are not for you. Trust yourself and believe what you know about yourself is right and always follow that. You can call this confidence in the fact that things will work out in the end. And also be confident enough to set boundaries. Do this with the people who don't get or respect the real you. So <laughs> this was probably a really, uh, um, you know, sometimes I have these nights where I write things down and I think about certain subjects. You know, it takes a certain amount of confidence to say no to certain things. And the best example I have for this is when maybe everyone in your circle is doing a certain job or everyone in your circle, uh, maybe a lot of people in your circle are in, in a career path that seems um, really safe and secure and maybe you're not on that journey. And then, for example, when you go out, you get asked about your job and maybe you're in between jobs or you're just figuring things out. And it seems that everyone else has this perfect situation, but you don't. Or another example, if everyone in your circle, once, you know, people start settling down, is, is you know, getting married and having babies and all they can talk about is this and... Um, they're asking you each and every time you see them when is your time going to come to do that so it's just so amazing I know it's easily said and harder to do but it's just so amazing when you can sit down and say to someone you know we all have different paths we all have different things that we find important and right now this is me so this is who I am. I'm not influenced by everything else. Of course, I do understand that, for example, if you're in a small town and it seems that 90% of the people you surround yourself with are like that, it's, it's quite hard. But this is why 
you know, you meet sometimes a person and you say, oh my God, they're one in a million. Because those are exactly the people who have figured out how to get past that, how to get past the initial feelings of disappointment, of feeling like you're less than, uh, of, of being, you know, of thinking I'm somehow different, I'm somehow in a, in a state that it's not aligned with everyone else within my circle, it seems like, and moving past that, you know, so what can, what's the word that can happen? It can be a bit of disappointment, a bit of grief, a bit of, you know, looking into yourself and thinking, oh my gosh, I'm, I feel quite sad. There's something that I need to change in my life. But then what comes after? After it comes finding your passions, first of all, uh, searching for the path that is for you, but at the same time being open to so many other things, you know, you're not closing the doors. To be honest, when you are the people who have experienced the same type of life uh, from an early age and they carried that to adulthood have honestly seems like they have closed so many doors um, so many other things that they can experience and if you're not like that it's okay if you are like that however it's certainly okay i'm now talking to especially to the people who aren't like that and who are thinking how can I be more confident when I need to tell my parents or I need to tell my friends that that's just not who I am and that's never going to be me and they shouldn't always bother me every time we meet with the same question of when is this going to happen, when am I going to do this or when am I going to do that. So for this I'm just saying if something is not for you, be confident enough to say it. If people don't have your best interest at heart, um, again, be confident enough to set boundaries with them and if you're not just yet, if you are making those mistakes, if you know that something's bad for you but you can't give it up just yet, it's okay and give yourself the time to figure it out by yourself. I promise you no matter who tries to figure it out for you or give you the answers, it's never gonna be the right one. So that's all for today. I want to end this video by saying um, the topic of confidence is something that always follows us in all realms of life um, whether you like it or not it is necessary uh, to have it so, um, as i said in the beginning of the video it's not about choosing to be humble and be nice and or be confident and rude to people no it's it's about how we can implement confidence in ways that we didn't think of before you know that's why i particularly chose not to speak about makeup or uh physical appearance necessarily in this video um even though i accept that that's a major part of confidence um a good part of confidence but it's not the full picture and these tips um i found that i'm I'm somehow incorporating them um, in my day-to-day -day life. Um, maybe not all of them at the same time, but certainly I have in incorporated them and found amazing results. And confidence really comes from within, from accepting yourself, the relationships that you have with yourself, and how you can make it better by having uh, human interactions with others. But it starts really from you and it ends with you because whether whatever feedback you get back from the world uh, will again be filtered through you and if you're in a good place you will know what to do with each and everything um, that happens to you and the feedback that you get and you know generally just what people say to you or about you etc I hope you found this really helpful. I, I hope you like these tips and you found them helpful and I would appreciate if you can please like and subscribe and share your experience in the comments with all of us. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye.